What's good, everybody? And welcome to your secret segment for the month of July 2019. I'm Andrew Renee, joined by Miss Christine Steimer. Hello. And Miss Brittany Brombacher. Hello. We're back together, Grand of the Studio. Yay! I know. It's been a very long time. It has. I walked in and that, there was that familiar smell. It's a good smell. Not a bad smell. Just the smell of of plastic. product be sure i was gonna say productivity <laughs> and hard work but you know what plastic or also plastic <laughs> well there is certainly a lot of plastic items in the studio and a lot of things that smell like electronics but maybe i don't know what else you would smell i guess yeah, it's just it's just a good it's smell just a familiar comfort yeah, you know. yeah, 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 it's be been over two months since you guys have been back here since the anniversary stream Way. Bullshit. At the beginning it's of bullshit, May. and it's probably the last time we'll be here too. <gasps> yes. yes. So we've mentioned that I'm moving to Los Angeles, and so the What's Good Game Studio, as you know, it is also moving to Los Angeles. And who knows? Don't worry, I got it. <laughs> maybe, um, maybe we'll change things up with the set when I get the new space. Mm -hmm. Who could say? Not us. Why do you keep drinking if you know you don't no, like listen, it? Because there's some things that taste better after whiskey. And that is not one of them. No, wine will never taste better in the first sip after having a hard spirit. Oh, Let dear. me live my life and in but, trial and error. Okay. Trial and error. Brittany, you've done this before, though. You've done this trial I before. I, don't, I know. It's You're like the excuse. kid that keeps putting dirt in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm, that's very true. It's, I have nothing because you are 100% correct. <laughs> I am that kid. Okay, so we are here to talk about things. So one of the perks of being our patrons on patreon.com slash what's good games is you sometimes get to choose what we talk about. And this month, y'all decided that you want us to talk about this topic. You have three games you must recommend to someone who has never played video games before. What are your three and why? Now, the change I'm going to make to this is we're going to assume that this person can pick up a game and learn you know, mechanics of a video game. It's not like they're going to be like spinning around in circles when they have to use dual analogs. Sure, sure, sure. So fair. That's the topic. Okay. I have mine ready. You go. Wait. Or wait. Oh, what? But I will not jump in that shit. Just one second. Yeah. Okay. I'm worried that your bar is lower. And I just want to oh, double check yeah, it. Oh, yeah. It does look pretty low. My bar is, my bar is wait, too low. Wait, my bar is super low. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize you meant me. I thought you meant. I thought you were talking to Brittany. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. In case we keep this video, which I'm hoping we do. No, we will. Cool. I, I'll just cut this piece out. Oh well, we can keep it in we're too. We're in the void now. Uh, Th whoa. Excuse me. <laughs> Sometimes that the void is where the burps live. The void is where the burps live. Yeah. Maybe it's just because you're speaking quietly. Am I? I don't feel like I am. She does. Maybe Brittany and I are just being very loud. I mean, also that could be possible. a case. I feel like I'm not that quiet of a person. You're not. Yeah, because your bar is going. Your bar is going fine here. But yeah. You need to adjust your gate. Your EQ. Oh my emotional intelligence. Wait, no, that's wait. No. Emotional <laughs> qualifications. Gate, I definitely don't want to just because that'll clip off. Oh, 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 oh. Um, you can always oh. boost your volume later. You too. can do the boost. Boost it up. See, this is what happens. Sometimes technology is weird. Even two years after doing this shit, you never know what's going to happen. You know what? It all changes. I never killed that bug, by the way. It's still living in my apartment somewhere. What was it? It's, it's like a small roach. That's like right. Thing. Yeah, you're crazy. You're a badass. I mean, what am I supposed to do about it? Nothing. There's nothing to do about it. I mean, you could have squished it on the spot. Well, no, I, with my bare feet? You sounded no. good in the test, so I think we're, we're okay. okay. Okay, so yeah. we're good. So that's okay. fine. That's that's what this is all about. Apologies. I just wanted to make sure before we like, get rolling. So I, I'll pick up from the... Things. Just wait a second. I think second. we just include everything. It's just, fine. Yeah, it's, who cares? It's way too much. Um, all right, and we're back. So I had to just go check a technical thing really quick. But without further ado, Steimer, you were oh. about to say... I was about to pitch it to Brittany. Uh oh, <laughs> Brittany. You were about to say. I'm about to go into my picks. Okay. Yeah, Anyone want to go first or you want me to go no. first? No, you clearly are prepared. I thought, no, Jason Capital and I talked P about prepared. this yesterday. We walked our, you know, our little typical loop around the neighborhood. Okay. And I pitched the question to him because I was curious to hear what he had to say. Sure, sure. Wasn't a big fan of his choices, but he knows that. So <laughs> my first choice would be Tetris. Oh, excellent okay. choice. Because yeah, I feel like Tetris choice. yeah, has stood the test of time. And Tetris appeals, Think of, I can't think of one person who doesn't know what Tetris is, right? And who mm -hmm. has experienced Tetris, easy to learn, difficult to master. It's the kind of game that you can pick up and just play forever and ever, and it never really gets old. So I think Tetris is a good choice to show someone that video games can be simplistic, mm -hmm. but they can essentially like be entertaining for your entire life. True. 
So that's my first pick. Okay. First pick Tetris. Approved. Good pick. Strong pick. Thanks. Very strong pick. Um, so when I'm thinking about three games that every person should play that kind of represent the digital art form of interactive media, that is video games, the one of the games that comes to mind immediately is Bioshock. Mm-hmm. And I, think, I thought of that one too. Yeah, I think what's really poignant and fantastic about this game is that it blends this fan really Im- is it bothering you i keep touching my wine glass this makes me a little um, bit nervous it really it really blends an immersive narrative that i think really goes places and it isn't predictable and makes you stop and think and puts a lot of philosophical um things that you would find in other forms of media into this really fantastically built game that has fantastic level design really great art the combat mechanics are so well done it's just engaging from start to finish and it's truly one of the best games of all time agree i agree i think the concern i would have is that bioshock can be freaky yes and i don't know if that's a good hey i was if I I hate freaky shit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I still loved that game. It did me take too. me a push to get into it. Like mm-hmm. someone had to be like, no, you're playing this game. And I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm so glad that they did. Yeah. I guess it'll depend on what other two games you pick to balance it out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go in a completely different direction. Perfect. Okay. Because I feel like everybody should experience an MMO in their life. Oh, hey. Because I feel like the social aspect that you get from an MMO is mm-hmm. so unique and interesting. Um, obviously, I'm going to pick Guild Wars 2 because it's the greatest. But that's, an, that's a really fascinating pick. Yeah. Go because, on. So there's a lot of things to like about it. Again, like it was one of the friendliest MMO communities I've ever been in. So like even if you were sort of new and lost... There was always someone there being like, if you just like even typed in, I know typing in chat is like, oh God, like am I going to get flamed or whatever? Like you'd be like, I need help. I don't know where this thing is. Someone will come and help you. Like that Mm -hmm. was always Guild Wars. And Mm -hmm. there's like enough different classes and different race types so that even if you want to be like a hot chick, you can be a hot chick. But if you want to be like a gnarly, cool monster cat, you can be that too. Like, so it has a lot of player choice in terms of presentation and like what you want to present as which is awesome um and especially in terms of like costume variety and everything what i loved about it and i've talked about ad nauseum i feel like is the way that they did end game content Mm -hmm. so like you're never treadmill locked to a level grind you are treadmill locked to a vanity grind i'm down with the vanity grind and i feel like that's just like it's so well designed that it's something where it's like okay if you're a new person to MMOs, you would hop in and have a really good time with it. Cause again, there's people who are friendly. Like you don't feel like you are working for nothing just cause someone was like, well now you need to be a level 95. Well, well, um, well. It's just like, it's not, it, you're like, Oh, I want to get all this shit so that I can have a rainbow fucking sword. Like that's why I'm doing it. And you have a quest and a goal to get there. And I mm-hmm. think that that was all, it was shifts kiss. Very shifts good. Kiss. Yeah, I didn't think about the online aspect of gaming, which is very big. That's hard. Yeah, with three like, games, it's hard to pick. Like, oh, yeah, totally. I, I just feel like a lot of people get a lot of comfort out of MMOs and like they can yeah. develop friend groups from them and like mm-hmm. find their space. And so I think it's a really cool thing that a lot of people don't understand and should give a try. I agree. Yeah. So my second pick is going to be God of War for PlayStation 4. Ha. Because when I think of you know, like the epitome of a masterpiece of video games, like granted, Bioshock, amazing. But in 2018 slash 2019, I think the best video game we've gotten to date has been God of War in terms of pacing, technical achievements, the graphics of it, the voice acting, everything about it is just like flawless. And there's a reason why it won game of the year um, over Red Dead Redemption 2, which is no small feat, ladies and gentlemen. True yet. So I think if I could introduce someone to what a video game can be in 2018 slash 2019, it would be God of War. Because I think it just blew everyone's socks off, including, you know, us who have never been typically huge God of War fans. We were just like, oh my God, like can sound game of the year. And that's a pretty hard thing to do. So I would say God of War in terms of like, what can a AAA video game, like, the, you know, I've, and it, I would like to pick a game like 
Pokemon or Zelda or something, which is one of Jason's picks. But the problem is, is I feel like God of War appeals to so many more people mm-hmm. than those games would. You mean the new one? I feel like the old ones wouldn't. Oh, the new one. Yeah, God of yeah. War PS4. Yeah, no, yeah. I, know, I know that's what you're saying. I, mean, I just feel like God of War in general is not necessarily a thing that would appeal to a lot of folks, but the right. new one definitely Yeah, there's is something a, for everyone, right? Appeal. You have like the father-son relationship and it's, oh, it's just so good. So I would say God of War would be like... So my first pick is Tetris because of the simplicity and the puzzle aspect of it, right? And then the second one would be, this is what a real AAA video game narrative-driven game can be. Sure. And then the third one, I'll just hop into it because oh. it kind of goes... No. Oh, oh okay. well, it kind of goes along with what okay. you're saying because okay. this is why I feel... Okay, actually, wait. No, I'm not going to. Okay. I'll, I've I'll pass shamed you out of it. <laughs> you, you did, you did, you did. Because there's a flow to it. Okay. Oh, okay. You go, girl. So my second pick is... Super Mario World. That was going to be my fourth pick if I could have a fourth pick. (laughs) So it's hard to pinpoint what's my favorite legacy Mario Brothers platforming game because really all of them have their strengths. And the reason I picked Super Mario World is because I I think it's a nice blend of where Nintendo began with the Super Mario Brothers franchise in the sense of really bringing... Uh, what a platformer is to the masses and really defining the platforming genre for video games at large. But I really just like the development of Super Mario World better because I think you can, there's obviously more characters that you can identify with. I think the art style is is better. And I just liked the, the whimsy of the world a little bit more. And they really learned a lot um, game over game into not only refine the platform and jumping mechanics, but the puzzle aspect of well and the exploration element that is part of all of the super mario brothers games Mm -hmm. and i really like it for those reasons because i think it's a nice balance between the hardcore metroidvanias of yore that were probably very prohibitive for a lot of gamers even today like those games are just hard and they're tough and that's why people love them and i think mario kind of touches a little bit on that metroidvania but it makes it much more approachable and focuses more on um, you can get through this game and have a great time and not not find all the secrets. But if you really want to go back and experience everything, you kind of have to like peel the layers back of the onion and find all of the secrets in the Star levels. Star World. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that that is one of the best games of all time as well. So Super Mario World, my second pick. Mm-hmm. Good pick. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I, whenever I talk with somebody who's not super familiar with video games, a lot of them think of shooters and they all think mm-hmm. of like, oh my God, games are super violent and like, Whoa, don't, whatever. You know, like people have a lot of stereotypes about games. Are you going to say Viva Pinata? No. Oh. <laughs> Although that might be my favorite later. <laughs> uh, Portal. Oh, ah! excellent choice. So, yeah, shooter. You're technically shooting just as you would in any first person shooter, but instead it's much more cerebral and you have to figure out exactly where to place these portals in order to get through these levels. And I think that that was so brilliant and mm-hmm. i i really want literally anybody who's ever said like video games are too violent or like shooters are terrible i kind of want all of them to be forced to play portal would you say portal or portal 2 portal only because i feel like portal 2 would lose impact if you hadn't played portal 1 sure exactly sure i'm with you i prefer portal 2 yes but, but if you had if you had if no this context person had never in, played video games yeah i think that they could pick up and play portal and really love it yeah oh is, man so, i really so want good. portal 3 i know i, I hope valve goes back to making games <laughs> Please, someday i just want some portal. i don't no one gives a fuck about half-life anymore i mean they do but like dude portal honestly like i don't <laughs> think it's controversial to say that if portal 3 and half-life 3 came out in the same year that portal 3 would win in sales oh sure at this point i feel like well, there's a whole there's a whole generation or maybe even two even generations that, that have no idea what half-life is and that's such a deep and complex story like to compare, like if somebody was to walk up to the Portal franchise versus walking up to Half Life, I just feel like it's so much more. Yeah, you'd have to be able to market Half Life. What is it? Three episode two? Is that mm-hmm. like the thing people are wanting in a way that st- Half Life two episode three? Half Life two. I don't know. There's I don't know. There's two Half Lives that the kids have been wanting for many years. You'd have to be able to market it in a way that makes it stand out from the other shooters nowadays, which I feel like would True. be a very difficult thing. But Portal, you're right, has that different angle to it. I don't know. And it has GLaDOS. It has GLaDOS. Which GLaDOS is, is like the fucking Portal is the funniest game ever. Okay, so my third game would be Stardew Valley. Ah. And, yeah. And this is, Wait, really? Well, this yeah. Is, of all the games across the world? Well, this is why. This is kind of really where the- a good Harvest Moon. Yeah, it's just really good personal like preference kind of comes in because what I think is so important, about, and I say Stardew Valley because I think that's the most well done sim 
as of late. Totally. Now, Sims is like cool in itself, but it's a little complicated. Oh, yeah. But I feel like Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons, those have always been my go-to therapy games. Whenever I'm feeling really stressed out or I need to just like escape or like pass the hours for whatever reason, I can hop into those games and I can relax. They don't have to be violent. They don't have to be super story intensive. You can have a game that's entirely based off building relationships and monotony, but it's still super exciting and fun, right? And I think that for me personally, video games, you know, you can have your God of War narrative experiences, which will blow your socks off. You can have your therapeutic, you know, story of seasons, um, Stardew Valley experiences, and you can have your Tetris, right? Which is like your go-to. And I feel like those three games, if one of those doesn't touch on you in a specific way, that's also what she said. Mm, yeah. Then I really don't know what would. So, because <laughs> I think video games can be really healing and therapeutic and there's a reason why that game is as popular as it is, right? And I think if you, because I think about like my aunt, my aunts and my grandma doesn't really play Sims. She's more into like JRPGs because she's a badass. But, uh, you know, all of my aunts like love the, the farming games and the Harvest oh, yeah. Moon games. We grew up playing that and it's just like a good go-to you can really lose yourself in them. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I lost, like, I think I at least had 100 hours in the And game. I think of how many people don't play games but play Stardew Valley. Because it's, like, you, easy, you know, you I feel it like it would go. go either one of two ways. Like, either the person would be like, what the fuck is this? Right, or right, they right. would be like, oh, my God, I've lost my entire life. Where did it go? And I feel like the person who's like, what the fuck is this would like God of War. Yes. Right? Totally. So that's why I'm like, yep, here, yep, take yep. this trio of, of goodness in your mm -hmm. life that's a really interesting selection you got so we've got tetris god of war and stardew valley yeah because i feel like it touches a little on everything yeah it's good 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 selection thanks i thought about it for like five minutes you, you thought about it more than i think well, we've had time really to think about ours but i think three is too few oh it but, is it's way too few. but i mean for the sake of the discussion since you guys voted on it um the Whoa. game that I would uh, it, knock on their glasses. The, I mean, there's so many games that I want to pick. Like, part of me is like, do I go Guitar Hero? Mm -hmm. Do I go mm -hmm. like um, Cruising USA? Do I go classic? Do I go new? But I think the thing that kept coming back up in my mind while I'm trying to decide what to show somebody who's never played video games is Journey. Oh, oh yes. and this might seem like an off the beaten path kind of pick but uh -huh. what i like about it is that it's super approachable from a gameplay perspective mm -hmm. it requires very little skill to play because the point of the game is not how good you are at the game it's to experience the game for and, and like kind of interpret the art and what it means to you and i think that's what makes video games such a wonderful medium versus all the other types of entertainment that are out there is that you can really have agency and experience an artist's vision in your own way in such a unique way. And what I really was re touched by with Journey is is this sense of connection that you have to the character. And also for me on my playthrough, not knowing that that second player that comes into your game was a real person. Mm. Like I didn't understand that and until... Play, then you like chirp at each other and you're like... Doo -doo, doo -doo. And they're like, doo -doo, doo -doo, and then you're like, Wee, and then they go away, and you're like, go oh, away. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Journey in a Nutshell. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you don't even need to play the game. No, you should play the game. Just trip at And I've downloaded Sky, the like spiritual successor on my phone from that game company. I can't wait to try it out. But I just the the art style of that game is so beautiful, and you can play it in a single sitting, and it's got this great kind of allegory running underneath of it, and the gameplay is just enough to make you um, obviously have to like focus on what you're doing, but you don't have to be an expert in anything. And I think that video games can seem really daunting to people because they don't know that there are this incredible, ex uh, like, uh, what's the breadth word I'm looking like, experience. Yeah, breadth of, mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to use the word like a cornucopia. Oh. Um, just like there's ah. so many different kinds of games like out there and feast. that there's, see, exactly, mm, food. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think Journey is going to be my number three pick. That's a good one. That is good. That's good. So I obviously already talked about shooters and turning that on its head. But then I feel like if you want somebody to experience, I'm also taking into account like what you guys have been saying mm -hmm. too. I feel like you'd be remiss to not mention one of the biggest video games out there. So I, my pick, though, would be Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Uh. Um, because I think it would be like if you don't know what video games are. Hey, here's one of the literally most popular franchises that make gangbusters money. Mm -hmm. And also, I loved Call of Duty 4. That's actually the only Call of Duty campaign I've finished. I've started a bunch 
and even though they're short like not most of the most of them have not kept my attention um but that one i was like super invested all the way through the campaign i had like emotional feelings about it when certain things happened in the story so i feel like even if you were like eh, first person shooters are dumb and all you do is run around and kill people well like yeah kind of but also <laughs> also true, there's true a there's a bit more to it and i think mm -hmm. that that game really demonstrated that beautifully are you excited then for what they're rebooting with i'm curious the new one? i'm very curious you're gonna play it i'm gonna play it yeah. and we'll see how far i get again call of duty 4 the only one that's made it through for me no pressure no pressure infinity indeed. ward <laughs> <laughs> i think that's an excellent pick mm -hmm. because it, obviously we've already said that we're suspending the disbelief that these people don't know how to play video games but i think that call of duty has captured something with fans around the world that clearly thousands of other developers have never been able to do and so people love to hate on them but there's a reason why they're so successful year after year and obviously they've ebbed and flow over the years some games have been you know, less popular than others, but they're still in the top 10 selling games every single year. And it's for a reason. And I think there's something universal about soldiers and war and this idea of country and patriotism that people, no matter where they live around the world, can identify with in their own way. And that's why it speaks to so many people. So excellent pick. Good job, ladies. Yeah. So if you never fucking nail it, if you never played video <laughs> games before, but you somehow stumbled across our channel. There you go. Wait, no, just for funsies. If you had a fifth pick, since I already picked your. Fourth oh, I one. think it would be more fun to pick a game that we think they should not play. Shouldn't. Uh, well, there's oh. so many though. How about I this? don't mean in terms of like it being bad. I just mean like. <laughs> How about we pick just for funsies one game that we would recommend to somebody who's never played video games. And the assumption is they've never played video games. Oh, I've got mine immediately. <laughs> like they Viva Pinata Time. <laughs> like they don't know they don't know how to use dual sticks. If you don't know how to use dual sticks, go find yourself Viva Pinata. It's on rare rare replay. Cause that shit is how I learned dual sticks. We should play that sometime. I need you to show me the ropes. It's because I've never played that. So good. Also, we'll I've do Trouble in Paradise. <gasps> oh she's dying <laughs> it's oh. true it's true okay so I, okay that'll I, be a stream at some point i think um in that case super mario world would be my pick for that game because then in that case you know you can only move left that shit's right. hard like I, i've seen your dad fail miserably oh God, but this is the thing he loves it <laughs> no he sucks he's so bad he's really bad yeah but i feel like mario is just one of those things you ask someone to pick up and play they can at least get enough enjoyment out They'll of at least moving take around the controller from they you. don't understand you, like, you hold y to run and then you jump at sure, the same sure. time they always miss like the big gaps and it's like fine go on with your bad self but like, I feel like but he, it's like the corgi <laughs> flopping into the ocean like right they're just like <laughs> oh, okay i jump and then you die and you're like oops yeah uh so my gut reaction is super mario world because that was my first video game and that's kind of what, like what hooked me and i was only five at the time and it was just something about the charm the music the weird settings that seemed all magical like the hills the hills had eyes not like the scary movie <laughs> like the clouds like the really goomba the goombas and the koopas what and if everything there was a movie called the hill like what if we remade it and it was just about the mario <laughs> it was but it was called the hills, the hills. The <laughs> and it's just the mario hills and they're like hello hills. we're so happy you're here <laughs> that went in a direction i was not expecting no it's still a horror movie it's still a horror movie it's just with mario everything oh mario <laughs> but wasn't the hills a reality show yes oh, yeah. Yeah. but you said the hills have eyes. the hills and the, the hills, hills have eyes, eyes. Exactly. scary one that's what i'm saying so while my mind was trying to recall the reality show you like went way in the 180 but that was great Steimer. this went places oh, oh right went places i wasn't expecting oh. Um, I think the game that I would recommend for somebody who's never played a video game and actually has never played a video game um, would be Kingdom Rush. And what I love about the Kingdom Rush franchise, and for those that don't know, it's a, a tower defense mobile game, is that it's touch screen. So it's very easy to pick up. If, if you've used a smartphone, you can play Kingdom Rush. And tower defense at its face value is a super easy concept. Like you have little enemies that are marching across and you have to stop them from getting across the finish line. Mm -hmm. You can use a variety of towers to do so. And I think what's great about it is it's an entry level into like a deeper RPG system that so many video games take advantage of. And 
if people don't even know like what RPG means, right? There's so much gamer jargon and, and lingo. It, you can say, hey, like, let me talk to you about what the word progression means and what it means in the context of video games. And I think tower defense is a really nice intro to that without feeling overwhelming because m even your run of the mill, you know, RPGs, whether they're, you know, d doesn't matter what kind of combat they are, right? They they get really involved really quickly and are very intimidating to new people. But I think tower defense is like a nice like primer for, you know, a more intense experience. Sure. And I picked Kingdom Rush specifically because I think what they do really well is they create an engaging story and a narrative and they've built these little characters and their worlds have so much personality. I've played a ton of tower defense games that I love. I mean, one of my favorites, of course, is Plants vs. Zombies, which would maybe yep. be another really good pick. Uh, probably even a better pick now that I'm saying it out loud. But I just really liked what they've done with the Kingdom Rush franchise and it didn't feel like I, I never at any point stopped having fun with the mm -hmm. game i think is what i'm trying to articulate cool i have a, a go ahead no i already did mine i did mine first oh okay you did it right so what about a game like detroit become human where do you think that falls into place because that's a game that more i mean you still have to like walk around and look at stuff and talk to people but i feel like that more or less plays itself yeah, yeah. it would so, be fairly easy to pick up and play yeah yeah, yeah yeah i thought about some of the telltale games but mm -hmm. i think like Telltale specifically because they did so much licensed stuff would really like alienate people who weren't fans of what they were doing. But Detroit Become Human is a completely original story. Yeah. And I think it has some really powerful moments that people can connect with in their own way because each of the three characters has their own like trials and tribulations that they have to go through over the mm -hmm. course of that story. And it's got this choose your own adventure vibe right. where your playthrough could turn out differently based off the choices you make. So yeah. I think that's a good pick. Yeah. 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 Well, this has been fun. I have to burp. Okay, just don't do it directly into the well, microphone. I'm leaning back. Or do. Maybe they want to hear it. <laughs> Maybe they do. Um, we appreciate that you guys support everything that we do here at What's Good Games by pledging to patreon.com slash what's good games. Thank you for being part of our secret segment. However, we have a bit of news. Ooh, We've yeah. decided that we want to change up how the secret segment is going to function from here on out. We were thinking about the secret segment and its origin and where it is now. And we thought, hey, wouldn't it work better if instead of we broke, instead of breaking this out into its own individual video and then having to post it later on YouTube, what if we just continued to work with you guys on our Patreon page to pull you for your ideas, but then instead we would actually make it a segment on the show so it's no longer secret it's now the patreon segment so this feature segment would be brought to you by patreon and our patrons mm -hmm. well technically it would be brought to you by our patrons yeah. um not the the company patreon <laughs> and we really like this because it gets you involved with us and helping us choose content for the show every week and from a production standpoint mm -hmm. it helps streamline our workflow um month to month when we get together because sometimes we spend so much time working on these get-togethers that we actually don't get to see each other and just enjoy each other's company which is kind of a bummer yeah because we're stacked so back to back with responsibilities for all of the things that we need to get done we're like how can we keep the essence and the spirit of the secret segment alive but also make sure that our patrons are included in what we want to do with the secret segment and so we think that this is a nice yeah a nice uh, a nice new path your topic is still getting picked and voted by you and we're still making a video about it in our video cast and it gets seen by more eyeballs and listened to by more ear holes so hey we're representing the eyeballs, you the eyeballs. I, eye holes eyeballs and ear holes and ear rolls ear balls <laughs> eye holes and ear balls ladies and gentlemen yeah you heard it here first those are the official terms eyeballs and ear wait eye holes, eye holes and, and ear balls, balls. Your ball sounds weird. I don't know how I feel about this. Brittany's losing her shit. But nothing will change. On the first of every month, I'll still poll for topics and choose some of the most popular ones from months past. And y'all will vote. And it'll be beautiful and glorious. And don't forget, you still have your exclusive vlogs every week. And I'm realizing I was supposed to put one up this week. 
she's like, oops oops i'll put it up this weekend guys yeah um and so we still are giving you guys three exclusive videos a month and we want you to know that you know we want to remain committed to you if for some reason you're like very outraged about this um this decision let us know we mm -hmm. want to hear from you um you can reach out to us on patreon or of course we're always available at contact at what's good games .com. So thanks so much, everybody. We love you guys. We hope you enjoyed this final secret segment because it's changing next month. Woo! And uh, we'll see you guys later.